Here we will talk about 10 dangerous plane landings. But before we start our countdown subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos. Number 10. Vera Airport. The investment needed to build a dedicated runway and airport facilities can be far too expensive for some places. And on the small Scottish island of Barra. They've done away with tarmac altogether. This is the only place in the world where regularly scheduled flights land on a sandy beach and things have to be perfectly timed because during high tide the entire runway is submerged beneath the water. Flights are limited to daytime hours only. But if there's an emergency at nighttime that requires an immediate evacuation from the island, there is the option of illuminating the beach with vehicle lights with three layouts that provide a landing distance of between 20,620,800 feet. Only twin otters use the airport and because of the astonishing views while touching down, it's no surprise that this is regularly voted as one of the top airport approaches in the world. It does of course require a steady hand on the part of a pilot to keep the plane under control as one wrong move can result in ditching into a sand dune. Number 9. Mate Kane Airstrip. Desu is a small mountain country that's entirely within South Africa. And if you don't want to attempt one of the bumpy steep mountain roads that lead up to it, your only choice is to go there by playing with such remote villages and very little flatland. However, one of the runways in the country is possibly the most extreme in the whole world, known as the Mukana Airstrip, it's mainly used by charities and medical flights to provide assistance to the nearby communities. And that's a bumpy surface that's maintained by some of the locals. Number 8. Kangan Hus Airport. Kangan Hus Airport is one of the busiest airports in South America serving the city of Sao Paulo in Brazil. But pilots have long warned that the approach particularly towards the 1.2-mile-long runway 35 is so dangerous, it's risking potential tragedy. If you look out over the windows as the plane's about to land, you can't help but notice the high-rise buildings that surround you and it feels like you're just skimming the tops of them during the final approach. Add to this the rapidly changing weather conditions in the area and pilots have very little room for maneuver to touchdown. Within the industry, it's often referred to as the aircraft carrier. Number 7. Gisborne Airport. Gisborne Airport covers a small 400-acre site near the city of Giz. Bourne which is on the east coast of New Zealand's North Island. At first, the three grass runways and the 4,300-foot-long main concrete runway look just like you'd expect from a single terminal airport. But this one is rather unusual. Because of the limited space for routes in and out of the city. The main runway has a railroad track that passes straight across it. Number 6. Tiamen Airport. Tiamen Airport is the only airfield on the small Malaysian island of tomorrow. And it's notorious in the region for being one of the most difficult strips to safely land on. The problem isn't anything to do with the 3,254-foot-long runway itself. But the approach to the tarmac, which you can only actually see just at the last moment before touching down. Pilots have to set themselves on a course that takes them directly towards a mountain range. And it's such a counterintuitive thing to do that a checkerboard target has been installed to help them keep on track. Number 5. Madeira Airport. When deciding on the best place to build an airport, the main priorities are enough flatland to construct the runway and as few mountainous or hilly regions around as possible to give aircraft plenty of room for maneuvers. But what if this simply is impossible? That's what the planners on the small Portuguese island of Madeira face, and the result was one of the most hair-raising landings in the world. At first, there was only room for a runway that was 5,250 feet long. But after a nasty crash in 1977, where a plane smashed through a bridge at the end and came to a halt on the sandy beach beyond it, there was no choice but to extend it. The problem though, was that there wasn't enough land to do so. So engineers built 180 columns that are 230 feet tall and support the extended tarmac over the beach. The result is now an approach that involves flying in low across the ocean and aiming towards a mountain peak. Pilots have to quickly bank right to line up on the heading towards the runway. Number 4. McMurdo Station. McMurdo Station is United States research facility on the southern tip of Ross Island in Antarctica. And since it's so far away from the rest of civilization, the only feasible means of delivering supplies and personnel is by plane. 
The problem of course, is that the surrounding terrain is completely covered by snow and ice, so its landing strip is unlike any other. It's rebuilt every year for the summer season. By the time the sea ice begins to break up around December, flights revert to a more stable airfield further away. Number 3. Tenzing Hillary Airport. In 2019 Tenzing Hillary Airport was named as the most dangerous in the world. And the more you learn about this place, the more you realize why it was a deserved title. It's located in the town of Lukla, which is in eastern Nepal, and is where many people who are planning to climb Mount Everest fly into at an altitude of over 9,000 feet. It's surrounded with mountainous terrain, with a steep drop at the end of the runway, and a solid wall at the other. Flying at these heights poses extra problems because of the thin air which reduces lift and air resistance, meaning it's more difficult to generate enough power to fly and it takes longer to slow down. This makes trying to land on one of the world's smallest runways extremely tricky, and there's no room for second chances because there simply isn't the space to fly around and try again. Bad weather further compounds the issues and when the clouds are low, it's almost impossible to see where the runway starts. And this has been the cause of several accidents in recent years. The one thing in pilots' favors is that the runway is at an angle which helps them to slow down once they've stopped the landing. Only helicopters and small fixed-wing aircraft are allowed to travel to this airport. Number 2. High Wind Landings. When conditions are perfect aircraft are one of the safest and most comfortable ways to travel. But things can quickly change when the wind picks up, especially during the most dangerous part of any flight that take off or landing. Pilots aren't affected too much if there's a head or tail wind, but the real difficulty comes when there's a crosswind. And the stronger it is the more complicated performing a landing becomes. This is when pilots are in their wages because there's no computer system in the world that can replace their instincts and quick reactions to safely bring the plane to a stop. The main thing they try to do is keep the nose of the plane facing towards the wind, which is a process called crabbing. This ensures that they can keep flying in a straight track across the ground results in the strange appearance that the plane is about to land at an angle to the direction of the runway. Of course wind like this is perfectly okay when you're in the air. Number 1. Huancho E. Roskin Airport. The Dutch island of Sabah is one of the most beautiful in the Caribbean. But when the decision was made to build an airport, there was only one piece of land that was flat enough for a runway, and it barely had enough space for a 1,312-foot piece of tarmac, which is only slightly longer than there is on an aircraft carrier. Unsurprisingly, the airport isn't used by jets and the only planes that land there are small twin otters. Only captains are allowed to control the plane as it approaches as they contend with unpredictable updraft from the ocean and the mountainous terrain of the island itself. Did our list amaze you? Which moment you found the most horrific? Do tell us in comments section. Moreover subscribe to our channel for further updates.